thank you so much for those kind words of introduction. I will just hopefully be able to share my, um, my presentation now. Hopefully you can see it. Good morning, everybody. It's a great, um, a great delight uh, to be with you. As Clarissa mentioned, I'm uh, from Planet Arc. We're an environmental foundation established in 1992, so 27 years ago. Um, and as you can see, the primary uh, goals of the organization are to promote sustainable resource use, encourage a low carbon lifestyle, and to connect people with nature. Um, probably the, the opposite word there is positive. It's not about what we can't do, but what we, more about what we can do as in individuals or corporations or councils um, to reduce our impact on, on climate change. Um, we've got a number of, of campaigns that have been running for many years. Hopefully at least some of you would have been involved in one way or other with National Tree Day, which took place this last weekend. And that's now been running for 24 years. And in that time, about 25 or 26 million native shrub, trees and shrubs have been planted by about four and a half million uh, Australians. Um, so it's a major, major campaign. And uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll have had a chance to, to partic participate in that. Uh, for my sins, I manage a campaign, campaign called Make It Wood, um, which as you can see, it's essentially about increasing the use of responsibly sourced wood as a building material. Now, as a, an environmental foundation, of course, one of the main reasons that we do that is the environmental benefits that timber brings. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about that because Adam will do a far better job of that when I finish talking shortly. Um, rather, I'm gonna talk more specifically about the health and well-being um, that we get, uh, the benefits that we get from using wood and a phenomena called biophilia and biophilic design, which I'll talk about shortly. Now, firstly, the World Health Organization has defined health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So in other words, it's just, it doesn't mean that you have to be in hospital, uh, hospital to be unwell. It means that we've got to find ways to keep people as active and as, uh, as, as, well, as socially, physically and psychologically well as we can. And over re recent years, there's been an increasing recognition of the benefits that humans get from contact with trees and with nature. Um, and in, that, in the same time period, Western society has changed its relationship with nature. Children's play has moved from outdoors to indoors. Uh, the iconic backyard has shrunk. Parents have become increasingly anxious about their children's safety. Working hours and stress levels have increased. Obviously the focus on, on screens has increased significantly and, and tended to encroach on all levels of life. So to ameliorate that, we produced a report and you can see a copy of it on the screen called Wood Nature Inspired Design. Uh, and as you can see, that outlines, outlines the importance of connecting builds with, buildings with nature and shows a very significant and positive impact on our health and well-being. It is possible to download that report. I commend it to you uh, from the Make It Wood uh, website, which is makeitwood.org. Because um, in over recent years, a significant global shift from agrarian to ur urban lifestyles is developing, not only in Australia, but around the world. And it's now, it's now thought that about half the world's population um, live in urban environments. And the UN anticipates that that figure will grow to about 66% by the year 2050. And these increasing urbanization rates mean that people have less access to nature in their daily lives. And most of us, and Australian government research shows this quite clearly, most of us now spend 90% uh, of our time immersed in man-made um, environments, whether we're at home or in the office or in transit between the two. And this disconnect with nature and the outdoors has been shown to correspond with an increasing prevalence of issues like obesity and mental health issues uh, and so on. And the science and the research shows that our physiological responses are controlled by what's called the sympathetic nervous system. SNS activation occurs when the body prepares itself for stress, increasing blood pressure and heart rate, whilst inhibiting things like digestion, recovery and the immune system in order to deal with an immediate threat that it perceives. And what studies have quite clearly demonstrated uh, is that the, the, the long exposure to man-made environments uh, that induce stress can trigger serious health consequences, increase, including obesity, 
type 2 diabetes and related cardiometric metabolic complications. And that brings us to probably the main topic, this whole notion of biophilia uh, and biophilic design. Um, if I was standing in front of you, I would ask how many of the audience had heard of this, and a typical response would be certainly less than 10 to 20 percent. Um, biophilia essentially means love of life or live living systems. It's not a new concept. It was first coined uh, by a German-born American psychoanalyst called Eric Fromm in 1964, and it was further popularized by an American biologist called Edward O. Wilson, um, who wrote his bo a book called Biophilia in 1984. And the biophilia hypothesis essentially suggests that there's an instinctive bond between human beings and, and other life systems. And by, the, by extension, biophilic design is the incorporation, of course, of nature and its components, including wood, into building design. Uh, into building design. And it's proposed that it, it provides a number of benefits through a number, a number of routes. Firstly, as I just touched on, uh, stress reduction, lowering of blood pressure, heart rate, stress hormones, uh, and providing a cell sense of well-being. The secondly, improved cognitive performance, mental engagement, alertness, concentration, physiological and psychological responsiveness, and finally, um, mood, emotion, preference, positive attitude, happiness, tranquility, mental health, uh, and so on. And what the research has showed quite clearly is that when used well, wood creates buildings that combine many of the key elements of biophilic design, including natural light, airflow, views of green spaces. And we know that wood can be also used to reflect the patterns and shapes seen in nature. To give it a technical term, that's called biomorphism and is seen as a natural material on, dis on display in a building. Uh, but another guy, another name for you to, to look up if you're particularly interested in this, uh, in this concept is a guy called Stephen R. Kellett. He wrote a book called Biophilic Design um, and he's highlighted six biophilic design tenets, each of which potentially could, uh, could be addressed using wood. You can see the first three there. The first one, of course, envir environmental features. Wood provides a direct link to nature. Um, being rec and it's obviously a recognizable natural element. Secondly, uh, natural shapes and forms. Patterns in wood are, and wood grain are naturally developed and wood can be used in forms representative of the material as a living organism. And thirdly, natural patterns and processes. Grain patterns, wood color spectrum and the presence of knots evoke natural patterns and, and processes. Fourthly, light and space. Wood has natural color diversity and can be stained in a variety of colors without losing its familiar familiarity as a natural product. And it can be easily deployed in products of various sizes um, to address um, specific space concerns. Fifthly, um, place-based relationships. Using locally sourced wood products can evoke region, a regional connection to nature. And Krakani Lumi in uh, Tasmania, the photograph that you can see is a really good example of that. And historical and uh, regional building methods which utilize wood may also um, be, be utilized. And finally, evolved human re um, relationships with nature. Trees and wood have been long used for as, a, as a source for shelter, tools, transport, transportation, and art. So we immediately recognize that timber is a, a, a great material um, and is you know, a, an evolved relationship that we have with wood as a building material. Concept called restoration theories, which um, I'm not sure whether any of you have heard of, but uh, is starting to get a lot more, uh, lot, lot more publicity. Restoration has been designed, as you can see, as a process of renewal that replenishes a depleted social, psychological or physical resources or resource. And these resources can often be depleted by an individual's effort to adapt to their environment, particularly if they're moving into the interior um, of a building. Another theory that's been proposed recently is called attention restoration theory. And this focuses on the understanding of how individuals replenish their ability to maintain attention on common tasks, such as those at the workplace that require a high level of attention to detail. That would also go obviously in universities and hospitals and, and so on. 
We also have another concept you may, uh, may not be familiar with, and it's a bit of a tongue twister called psychophysiological stress recovery theory. And the whole notion of this, this, this concept, psychophysiological stress recovery theory, suggests that, it, that natural environments, and even views of those environments from within a building, as you can see in the photograph, um, will aid recovery from both psychological and physical stress. And probably the best example of that is, uh, for, uh, is when recovering from surgery. So you can see there are a number of components in addition to this whole notion of biophilia and biophilic, biophilic design, these restoration theories, all of which help to, to um, make, make wood and natural materials and in, indoor plants and so on, such a valuable component uh, for use in interior design. Another uh, concept that was proposed by uh, Stephen Kellett in his book Biophilic Design is this notion of what we call restorative environmental design. And the an approach that seeks to achieve both low environmental impact by lessening adverse impacts on the natural environment and in addition a biophilic design approach that fosters a higher level of contact between people and nature in the buildings they, they inhabit. It's, the theory suggests that it's not sufficient merely to focus on, lo on, on low em environmental impact, although of course that's important, um, uh, but also it's necessary to provide a, a, an environment which is restorative and enhance our, our positive uh, relationship to nature um, and the built environment. And you can see that in principle there are three goals of restorative environmental design, which are one, reduce the environmental impact of new buildings, of course, Secondly, ensure buildings provide healthful benefits to their occupants. And finally, to promote, to pr to promote a uh, stronger connection to nature. The research shows, and this is detailed in, in quite a lot of detail, or provided in detail in the um, Planet Art report that I mentioned earlier, show quite, quite conclusively that there are benefits on the body. A number of studies um, to examine the effects of wooden rooms and furnishings on the human inhabitants have clearly demonstrated that the presence of wood can have positive physiological effects, lowering blood pressure and, and heart rate, and providing improved thermal comfort and reduced stress responses um, compared to other materials. And we know particularly uh, for school children, that can be one of the most stressful times of their life. Um, so we can use uh, natural materials and biophilic design principles in schools. It can have significant and long lasting financial or economic benefits uh, for children. We know also that there are proven benefits on, on the brain. Uh, a number of studies, again, which are highlighted in the, in the Planet Art report, examine the impact of wood on our brain. And the results of these studies indicate the presence of wood has a positive um, impact on our, on our psychology. Um, for example, they, a couple of the studies, one in New Zealand and one in Japan, looked at the behaviour of aged care residents, one where they compared their behaviour in predominantly man-made environments to those where they were surrounded by natural materials like wood. And in the latter, um, they had a significantly improved emotional state and expanded self-expression. They were much more talkative and friendly. And we know that in Australia, dementia costs of the order of about $5 billion per annum. So we can use these types of um, design techniques. It can have a significant and long-term um, environmental and economic benefit. We know that wood provides benefits on the air. I think most of us would, would realize that wood is hygroscopic uh, and can therefore help to uh, humidity control by absorbing, absorbing moisture in very humid environments and returning moisture to the air um, in very dry environments. And in, in areas like offices, this can be particularly important because we know that um, uh, worker productivity could be adversely impacted by as much as 12% if workers are dissatisfied with the interior environment in which they are working. And lastly, uh, we know, and this was conclusively proven by a research project by a company called Pollinate uh, concluded last year, the, the, um, the reports called Workplaces, Wellness and Wood Equals Productivity. Again, it's available for download on the makeitwood.org website. I commend it to you. And what it shows quite clearly is with the increasing use of, of timber, um, it, it, it shows a direct relationship to increased satisfaction, creativity, productivity, and increasingly significant reduction in unplanned leave and absenteeism. 
So wood can have a lot of, uh, uh, not only does it look better, obviously in our opinion, and provide significant environmental benefits that Adam will talk about shortly, but it can have significant benefits on our, on our body, on our brain, on our psychology and physiology and so on. Um, so there are clearly a lot of, a lot of benefits uh, to be gained from these types of design con concepts. I'll just show you a couple of examples um, which highlight, I think, rather beautifully um, the use of wood as a natural material in a, a number of different environments. Firstly, you can see Bainbridge Island House over in WA. As you can see from the quote, the home's interiors are an ode to nature, featuring a palette of natural materials and Feng Shui compliant layout. I think if I lived in that lovely house with a beautiful view over the lake in the background and the mountains and natural materials, I'd probably be uh, feeling fairly well too. It really is quite a stunning, stunning timber environment. The Jordan Springs Community Hub was finished uh, by Lendlease last year um, in New South Wales, in Penrith, on, in Western Sydney. You can see it's a, a community hub, a, a vibrant place for locals to gather, to learn, to meet neighbours, um, and as a place that, that, that the whole community can use. And again, one of the first uses of uh, engineered timber, cross-laminated timber in Australia. This project, I suspect, needs no particular introduction. It's one of the most famous um, engineered timber buildings, one of the early timber buildings in Australia, completed in 2014. And even now, five years later, would still be Australia's most uh, sustainable, most co community building, constructed predominantly out of uh, CLT and recycled hardwood, and probably one of the best examples of biophilic design that I've seen. If you're in Melbourne and you get a chance to go out to, to Docklands, I commend it to you. It's a, a fantastic example of, of what we're talking about. You can see those beautiful glue lamb columns and beams in, in the foreground. Our Lady of the Assumption Catholic Primary School in North Strathfield was completed, well the first stage was completed a couple of years ago and the second stage um, was open to students in January of this year. And as you can see it's a very different type of space to trad traditional schools and with a big focus on the use of timber and, and natural materials and certainly a biophilic design environment which is very different to the schools in the north of England that I would have gone to in the, uh, in the 1970s that's for sure. This is a project which a BVN completed um, earlier this year. There's a two, there are two buildings in the uh, two timber buildings in the Canberra precinct, as you can see. It's what they've described as an innovation-rich um, precinct. It's a, got a 450-bed student accommodation made out of engineered timber and a five-story collaborative teaching building. Again, I've had the chance to go and see that building. It's uh, it is a fantastic example. Bendigo Hospital, multi-award winning, and I guess as one might imagine in a hospital environment, it has been designed very much about around health and well-being. But that was the sort of central ethos um, where they intentionally incorporated natural materials like timber to increase the well-being of not only patients but obviously visitors and staff. And finally, a couple of a couple of overseas uh, projects. First one, as you can see, is 15 years old now, so it's not particularly new. Uh, Credit Valley Hospital over in Toronto in Canada. Um, I just loved the quote, and it's a, a stunning looking photograph in my opinion as well. We wanted to bring the, the lines of nature into the built, built form. When people walk into the building, they feel as if they are part of something. There's a deep rooted connection, and it really this, this whole biophilic design principle at, at play there, I think. And finally, um, another project from Canada, this is the Surrey Memorial Hospital over in the other side of the country in BC, in, in Canada. Um, and you, again, a lovely quote, biophilic design has led to the greater use of natural daylight, access to views of nature, and the introduction of wood and other natural materials into a healthcare facilities. And I think that's, that really encapsulates really quite ni nicely the, uh, the whole principle of, uh, of biophilic design, what we're trying to achieve and the benefits that occupants of hospitals, workers in an office, students in a school or a university, pretty well anywhere can, um, can glean from these. So I commend it to you. I hope that was uh, of interest. Just in conclusion, if you want to read more, the two reports I mentioned are available for download at makeitwood.org, um, both the, the Planet Arc and the Pollinate Report. 
So thank you so much for listening. I'll now hand over to Adam Jones, who's going to give us a, um, a good understanding or fantastic understanding of the environmental benefits that, uh, that Timber provides. Thanks very much.